You suck at cooking, yeah, you totally suck. Today we're making pan-seared steak, also known as beef toast, which is one of the best ways to cook a steak. Sure, you can use controlled fire if you want to use 2 million year old technology, but today we're going to use 129 year old technology for a fresh modern taste. Mmm. I've got a ribeye here, which I'm removing from the fridge 20 minutes in advance so the center comes up to room temperature. Bam! That's a big ass myth as it takes over two hours for thick steak to get up to room temperature. And some people who've tested it say it doesn't make a noticeable difference, so if you don't do it, don't worry about it. Cover it with very small rocks at least 40 minutes in advance for reasons, but if you don't have time for that, just salt it right before it hits the pan. Here's an acronym to help you remember. SALT. Spread at least 40 minutes in advance. Most guides say use kosher salt, but I'm using sea salt to combine the flavors of seafood and land food. For a good sear without overcooking it, your steak should be at least 1.5 inches thick or around three times as thick as your- You know, one big advantage of pan frying over grilling is you never have to experience the outside world. You can just stay inside. Forever. 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 Another great thing about pan frying is you don't have to deal with Bob next door saying, You know, you should only flip it once to seal in the moisture. Whatever, Bob, you have mustard on your shirt. Wick away any excess moisture with a thin slice of tree. Now we'll just give our stove element a scrape. Oh wait, we don't have to do that because this isn't a dirty barbecue. Pans on medium high, throwing in some oil. Make sure you use one with a high smoke point, such as one of these. And be mindful to avoid any of these because their smoke point isn't high enough. Once that oil is just about smoking, lay your steak in away from you so if you drop it, the oil won't splash on you. Here's an acronym to help you remember. Away. Always lay steak away from you. Remember that steak is notoriously clingy. You'll have to give it time to let go of the pan, but after a minute or so, you can flip. And remember, the best way to sear a steak is to only flip it once. Bam! That's a big ass myth. The more you flip, the more even it cooks because you're keeping that heat going on both sides. And remember, crust is flavor. I'm not talking about this crust. And I'm also not talking about your crusty attitude, which I really don't need in the kitchen right now. Get out. No, no, not you, you're good. I'm talking about this crust, AKA a one-way ticket to Flavor Village. Basting also helps keep the heat on both sides, throwing in some butter to add the flavor of butter, and the oil will raise the smoke point of that butter so it won't burn. Bam, not true. If the oil is hotter than the butter's smoke point, it's the oil burning the butter instead of the pan. So get that butter in a couple minutes before it's done. I threw in some rosemary to add the flavor of rosemary and also a serving of vegetables. A little more basting action for flavor dispersion and this is an excellent time to forget to grind on some pepper, pepper, pepper. Now drive a steak into the steak, just in case you accidentally cooked vampire meat. And it's best to stab it with a steak that tells you the temperature if you're not cooking a steak that has a built-in thermometer. And here's a handy scale so you know what name to call the temperature you like. You'll have to cook it to 145 degrees Fahrenheit in order for it to be USDA approved, but keep in mind that nothing can replace the approval that comes from yourself. Get it out of the pan 10 degrees lower than you want it because whoa, that looks like a turtle missing a back leg. Anyway, just like a turtle when you sneak up and scare it, the steak will rise around 10 degrees more after you take it out. We'll rest the steak for around 10 minutes to make it extra juicy for other reasons. And yes, you can poke it with a fork. It's not gonna cause the steak to leak. Whoa, whoa. Once that's done, you can cut it open. This is a medium rare, verging on rare, but if you want it more done, you can just desaturate this and perfect. Now for a quick pan sauce. First, it's called pan sauce because after you eat it, you're gonna need a nap. Once your pan has cooled down, call in a shrub removal service, put it on low heat, then throw in a half cup of broth, a teaspoon of balsamic vinegar, some more butter if you want, and some freeze-dried chives. Then wash the dishes while cooking until you have this ridiculous gravy. Pour it on your steak or dip it or drink it with a straw and try not to get addicted. Now it's time to get out your all-purpose cleaner because we're gonna have splatter everywhere. I'm not just here to show you only the sexiest parts of cooking. Bam, bam, bam. This video is sponsored by Misen and their amazing stainless steel pan, which I've used to cook steak, sauteed onions, made tomato sauce, chicken, and even eggs. You hear that? That's the sound of stainless steel combined with aluminum to optimize heat retention and conductivity, nerds. They've also designed this to have 19% more cooking area than other premium brands, which is great if you need to cook 19% more of anything. Heat it in the oven up to 500 degrees, throw it in the dishwasher, throw it on the couch, drag it on the floor, pet your dog with it. It's actually virtually indestructible and will probably outlive you. 
Long story short, these pans are tough. <laughs> You won again, mise en pan. They use the same materials as the competition, but it sells for less than half the price, which you might like if you think money is cool. Also, if you hate cooking, you can just get it to enjoy the trippy reflections. Whoa. Go to the link in my description and use promo code YSAC for 20% off your first order. Again, go to the link in my description and use promo code YSAC for 20% off your first order.